Hello my friends, welcome to Marrakesh. It is the afternoon right now, so it's not as busy as it's going to be busy tonight. But right now I see some snakes. I haven't seen monkeys or donkeys yet, but I'm sure they're gonna come later. So we're gonna go down there, walk around a little bit, get lost, come back tonight and show you the night time at Marrakesh. at the Jam Elfna Square. So we're also near the Sook, which is kind of behind us. So once you go in there, you kind of could get lost. But right now we're just in the center. Look at all these shops behind me that are selling like little snacks, fresh squeezed orange juice, pomegranate juice, apple juice, you name it, they got it. but I think it's about to happen so I have to be very very careful here in Marrakesh if you don't pay attention they'll just put it around your neck and then they'll ask you for some money and in order to get that off your neck you gotta pay them right so just be careful I am very afraid of snakes so I'm gonna try not to get attacked <laughs> Jama Elfna Square is a lot more fun at night. It's really not busy during the day. So in order for you to get the full experience, you need to plan to spend the night in Marrakesh. While waiting for the sunset, I decided to explore the narrow alleyways of the traditional market in Marrakesh, which is locally known as Souk El Medina. This maze of narrow streets is lined with colorful textiles, clothing, pottery, ceramics, jewelry, spices, and so much more. If you like to go down the rabbit hole, you will certainly get lost in these complex narrow alleyways, but getting lost in them is part of the fun. So finally, I made it into these little streets where you get all the shops. So just one thing about this place is that there's still locals living here. There's restaurants, hotels, apartments, shops, um, everything you pretty much need some of these places do have prices on their I mean tags with prices on their items most of them do not because when you walk in they're gonna start to give you a reasonable or an unreasonable price for items but you have to know how to hassle them too they will hassle you for money hassle back don't be afraid eventually I'll end up buying something today as long as they're not too pushy, as soon as they start getting pushy, it kind of turns me off and I just lose interest because the more they're pushy, you really can't even enjoy looking at the items that you want to buy. So we'll see. Thank you. So right now what I feel that is very annoying is these motorcycles because just be careful you're not getting run over. This is my second time in Marrakesh and I can consider myself an expert in these streets. So I walked through these streets to get to Al Bahia Palace. If you plan a visit to Marrakesh, you really need to save some time for a two-hour visit to the Bahia Palace. 
Al-Bahir Palace is an excellent depiction of the Moorish architecture in Morocco and a perfect exhibition of the Moroccan craftsmanship at its best. The palace was built at the end of the 19th century as the residence of Minister Musa ben Ahmed, who was in the service of Sultan Muley al Hassan I. It is believed that Musa ben Ahmed fell in love with a girl named Bahia, so he named his 237,000 square foot palace after her. Yes! Getting ready for the palace. Let's go makeup maybe my mattress for my floor I don't know but back then they didn't have what we have now but it looks like they had a lot of fun living this way all right I am finished with exploring Bahia Palace I am gonna get out of here and go some more beautiful places here in Marrakesh let's go as I was making my way back to Jama Alfna Square, I stopped at the Museum of the Moroccan Culinary Arts. There are six zones in this museum. This is big, so it will take you at least an hour to see everything. I recorded over 60 minutes of footage inside the museum. I wish I could share all that footage here, but it will put this video over two hours. If anyone is interested in the entire raw footage, let me know in the comment section, and if there is enough interest, I will upload the entire raw footage to my website and make it available to everybody. Currently, I am in the Moroccan Culinary Art Museum. This should be fun. Can I take this home? I hear music. Zone one. We're going to start with the salads. This is where the music is coming from. Probably gonna end down there soon.
Welcome to the cooking class. This is the Moroccan cooking workshops inside the museum. There are 35 cooking stations and two cooking sessions per day, one at 10 and one at 3.30 in the afternoon. You can book as many cooking sessions as you need. The cooking classes are taught by the dadas, which are experienced, well-known chefs. If you ever want to take a cooking class in Morocco, this is definitely where you want to do it. During the class, you will have unfettered access to the secrets of blending Moroccan spices, the skills of baking, and acquire the skills of cooking some very tasty Moroccan dishes. All the dishes that students prepare will be served during the tasting session on the terrace, which we will see later on in this video. It's head spinning. All the spices that Moroccans use. Wow. Hey. Time for some tea. Come on. I got my saffron tea. Oh, it's hot. Be careful, guys. When you pick this up, very hot. tastes really really good not that I know what saffron tastes like but it's pretty good after the amazing saffron tea I'm gonna go to zone 6 which is the last zone and see what's awaiting for me zone 6 will bring you back down to the exit floor it has a collection of some of the most common Moroccan traditional ceramic crafts and traditional baskets. It is now time to go back to Jama Elfna Square to enjoy the nightlife. This is nightlife in Marrakesh. Behind me, right now, you will see pretty much tourists, locals, mixture of everyone just coming out, having fun, um, eating some good food. Um, behind me, you will see a bunch of these green tents, right, and something smoking, that's the food tents. Um, so every time you walk those streets, they're gonna ask you to sit at their stand and eat, or this one is gonna say he's lying to you, his food is not good, mine is better. So don't get intimidated by that. Just take your look, um, take a look around and see what you would like to eat or what you would like to try and just go for it. It's really not that expensive. The portions are a little bit small, so which is perfect for like just trying something new. Um, that's what I'm gonna do in a few. Cause I am getting hungry. All this walking, talking, and working hard makes me hungry. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. 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 See you later. Okay. is 100. 100? Easy number. Okay. 100, always to hear. Thank you, sister. Don't forget. Excuse me. So love, 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 love. Come. That's why it's very good. Very nice. Okay. Okay. You are picking it in this. I'm freaky looking good. As I said earlier, Jama Elfna Square is busier at night. So as soon as the darkness descends, the square gets more crowded and intense. Chefs fire up their grills, a blend of Berber and Arabic music gets even louder. Fortune tellers, henna tattoo artists and storytellers are surrounded by a dozen of spectators. You can stop at any station and enjoy the show. However, expect that you will be asked to pay some money for the show. As it is the case for most touristic destinations in the world, tourism often takes out the originality of the place and introduces greed and deceitful behavior. Jama Elfna is no exception. As a tourist, you will likely pay more for everything. There are no set or standard prices. Ask for the price first for any service. Con artists are everywhere, so do not think that you are special when you are approached. You will often be approached by a performer or someone offering a service in a friendly manner, and if they don't like what you're paying, they will flip on you quickly and become more aggressive. 
As a disclaimer, I didn't pay to take a picture with a monkey or a snake. I am completely against chained monkeys that are forced to perform and snakes being irritated by music in order to perform tricks. I believe that by paying money, I will be encouraging that old form of entertainment. Buggy ride at night, it's kind of fun. You don't get to see a lot because it's night, but um, one thing I want to say, I did ditch my rental car because for sure I am not driving in Marrakesh. It is crazy. I don't understand the way they drive, the way this traffic works. But so many motorcycles from every side, cars just passing you from left and right and squeeze in between and it's, it's, it's just like, oh my god. So I chose not to drive in Marrakesh. I am taking cabs everywhere. Um, it's much easier and it gives me a peace of mind that I do not hit someone on the road. After the horse carriage ride, I decided not to go back to the square and have dinner. I decided to have dinner near my hotel. I changed my mind. I decided not to eat at the city center. I came to this place that is close by my hotel. Um, the street or the area is called Gillies. Um, and I ordered some local food again, Herrera soup. And I'm gonna have a chicken tagine. And right over there, there's some amazing desserts which I will take to go and eat in my hotel room. Um, bon appetit! So every time you order a um, Carrera soup, you some of them do come with lime, some of them don't. You squeeze in lime if you like a little bit spice to it. But they also serve uh, dates and spaghia with that. It's sweet, which goes perfect with the Herrera soup. After having my breakfast and a good cup of mint tea, I continued my visit to the Minara Gardens. The Minara Gardens is one of Marrakesh's most iconic monuments. Minara Gardens are presided by a pavilion next to a large basin of water. Minara means a lighthouse or a light pole that marks the path. The gardens were developed in the 12th century around the lake and they cover approximately 288 acres of land. The basin was initially used to irrigate the surrounding orchards and also as a training area for Almohad's army to prepare them for crossing the Mediterranean Sea to Andalusia which is known today as Spain. The water in the basin was replenished by a 12th century water system known as Katara which uses a series of connected wells starting from the Atlas Mountains 30 kilometers away. My next and last site during this visit to Marrakesh is Majorelle Gardens. I always wanted to visit this fabulous fabulous attraction but the lines are always long and I simply couldn't wait two hours to get in. But this time I was lucky. Jacques Majorel was a French painter. Majorel was fascinated with Morocco and decided to move permanently to Morocco and build an art deco style villa in Marrakesh. After building the villa he surrounded it with a botanical garden full of exotic plants. When Majorelle died in 1962, Garden Majorelle fell into neglect. In 1980, Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger purchased a garden and saved it from destruction. Now Garden Majorelle is a museum and it is one of the most visited sites in Marrakesh. There is a fee to enter Majorelle. You can purchase a ticket to Garden Majorelle only or you can add a visit to Pierre Berger Berber Museum. The museum is located inside the villa. Both are worth a visit in my opinion. What you are seeing here is is not Halloween costumes or a haunted house. This is the traditional wardrobe in Morocco depending on the region. Morocco is very diverse and each region and often each tribe has its own fashion and a certain way of dressing. The clothing items, the colors as well as the fabric also changes from one area to another. This also applies to the jewelry. There are limitless types and styles of jewelry in Morocco and I was blown away by the level of craftsmanship and all the intricate details in this jewelry. It is fascinating. at the beginning.
beginning of this video. I'm going to eat at Jama Elfna Square at night. So here I am. Alright, I am at the stand 117 and I am gonna have pastilla and tangia. Um, I heard it's very delicious. I should try it. So tonight is the night. I was supposed to do this last night, but I couldn't. Alright, I got my tangia and my pastilla. Let's try this first. Alright, just got back from my dinner. I had two amazing days here. I am exhausted. And remember guys, last night after my dinner, I got some uh, goodies. But I totally forgot to show you last night. I already ate one. So I'm gonna enjoy some right now. Go to sleep. And I gotta get ready for my uh, next city. So... I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I want you to share, like, or subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to see what's next. Mm -hmm.